Hey everyone, my name is Sam and welcome back to another video. Now if you've never seen my channel before, let me give you a brief bit of information about myself. My specialty on YouTube seems to be obscure franchises, as I've seemingly discovered over the last couple of years. It started off with my first major channel, The Casual Prince, which focused on the Arthur and the Minimoys franchise, and then when I started this channel I started covering other obscure franchises, like Primeval, the Legend of Spyro, and most recently, Dinotopia. And over the past couple of days, I've rediscovered another childhood favourite franchise, so I thought to myself, why not add that to the pile? So let's talk about Dinosaur King. Dinosaur King was probably my favourite TV show growing up as a kid, and going back to watch it now, it's still as good as I remember it being. The show was basically Jurassic Park meets Pokemon meets Yu-Gi-Oh! And it was pretty fucking cool. It told the story of three kids discovering magical stones and cards that allowed them to summon dinosaurs. And together they fought against the evil Alpha Gang who were planning to use the dinosaurs to take over the world. Now, a lot of people don't talk about Dinosaur King and just dismiss it as a Pokemon ripoff without actually watching it. And... While there are a lot of elements that it does share with Pokemon, that is personally something that gets on my nerves quite a bit. And I don't see basically anyone talking about Dinosaur King nowadays, frankly because there's not really been a lot of stuff to do with it nowadays. Apart from a very cool fan game that's being developed, which I am aware of and I probably will update you guys on when any more news comes out. But obviously probably the coolest thing about this show was the dinosaur battles, and what made these battles so special were the move cards. Now, if you've never seen the show before, let me give you a quick rundown. There are three types of cards in the show. The first are grey cards, which specifically summon dinosaurs. Each dinosaur corresponds to a specific element, and although there are only six elements, there are actually eight different types of dinosaur. And then the other two are orange move cards, the first of which are regular move cards, which don't have an element and can therefore be used by any dinosaur, although they tend to be weaker attacks. And the second are super move cards, which can only be used by a specific type of dinosaur, but tend to be pretty damn powerful. So in this video, I'm going to be going over every single move card that was seen in the first season of the show. I'll probably do season 2 at some point as well, but the reason I'm just doing season 1 is because I'm much more familiar with season 1 than season 2. So this video is going to be me going over every move card in Season 1, where it was first seen, who used it, and what it does. Now, if you like Dinosaur King, make sure to leave a like and subscribe, because I'll definitely be doing more Dinosaur King stuff in the future, and if you are a Dinosaur King fan, stick around to the end of the video, because there's some very cool things that I want to tell you about. Oh, and by the way, I'm going to be bringing up images of the move cards as I'm talking about them, but if I only show the back of a move card, that's because the front was never shown. There have obviously been some fan interpretations of what the fronts could look like, but I only really want to show you guys what's actually in the anime. So without further ado, let's get straight into the video. The first move card was a super move card introduced in the very first episode of the show. In this episode, we were obviously introduced to the three main characters, Max, Rex, and Zoe, the members of the D-Team. And also in this episode, we were introduced to Max's dinosaur, which was a triceratops named Chomp. As a member of the Ceratopsid family, Chomp was a lightning dinosaur, and within the same capsule that Max found Chomp, he also found a lightning super move card called Electric Charge. This move card caused Chomp to be struck by lightning and charge forward, engulfed in electricity, and ram opponents with an orb of lightning. It remained Max's only move card for a good while, and it's a pretty good job that it happened to be with Chomp's card in the first place, Otherwise, the Alpha Gang probably would have taken Chomp in the first episode. In episode 2, we were introduced to Rex and Zoe's dinosaurs, 
Aes, the wind type Carnotaurus, and Paris, the grass type Parasaurolophus. With their new dinosaurs, the two of them went to Egypt to help Max, and they showed up with super move cards of their own. And although it's never actually stated, I'm going to assume that the two move cards that Rex and Zoe showed up with were found with their dinosaurs. Rex was gifted with the wind type super move card Cyclone, which surrounded Ace with wind and enhanced his strength and agility. While using this move, Ace would either charge forward and ram his opponent, or grab them by their tail and swing them around, similar to a different move we're going to talk about a bit later. Now the category of wind dinosaurs tends to be small to medium sized carnivores and their super moves tend to focus on agility based attacks rather than power. Now unlike Max's electric charge which was shown to almost always end the battle, Cyclone was repeatedly shown to be actually quite a weak super move. It was shown in multiple different battles to only weaken the opponents rather than completely defeat them. And even when it did defeat dinosaurs, it was only usually when the opponent dinosaur in question had already sustained a great amount of damage, whereas moves like Electric Charge could basically completely incapacitate a dinosaur that hadn't taken any damage at all. However, in episode 16, it was shown that Cyclone could actually be used in a different way when combined with water, forming what is most commonly referred to in the fanbase as the Hurricane Attack. This involved Rex activating Cyclone whilst Ace was within water, which formed an enormous tornado of water that Ace could control, which was technically the show's first fusion move. Ace used this enhanced Hurricane Cyclone on two separate occasions, once in episode 16 whilst facing off against the Alpha Acrocanthosaurus, and once in episode 32 when facing off against the Baryonyx at Niagara Falls. Moving on to Zoe and Paris, they were gifted with the grass type super move card, Nature's Blessing. Now Nature's Blessing actually works a little bit different than Cyclone and Electric Charge, as it's not actually an attack move card. Instead, it actually worked as a healing move, allowing Paris to shoot out a beam of green nature energy, which helped rejuvenate and heal dinosaurs that were low on energy. Grass super move cards tended to focus on either healing dinosaurs or summoning other dinosaurs to fight for you, as grass dinosaurs themselves weren't actually that good at fighting. Now, while Nature's Blessing was shown to be useful sometimes, it was actually quite unfortunate for Zoe and Paris for multiple reasons. For one, it actually takes a few seconds for Paris to charge up and use the move, and it's been shown multiple times that it is pretty easily interruptible. And second off, it meant that for quite a while, Paris didn't actually have any attack moves, which was a problem considering that out of the 3D team dinosaurs, she was definitely the most vulnerable, as Parasaurolophus aren't meant for fighting. But not to worry, as she only had to wait 10 episodes to get an attack move, and speaking of, let's move on. Episode 3 introduced two new move cards, but rather than the D team using them, it was the Alpha Gang. Throughout the show, the Alpha Gang had three dinosaurs of their own. They started off with Terry, the fire-type Tyrannosaurus Rex, but managed to capture two other dinosaurs permanently, Spiny, the water-type Spinosaurus, and Tank, the earth-type Cychania. Episode 3 featured the first move cards from both Terry and Spiny, and for Terry, it was one of the most iconic move cards in the entire show. With its menacingly iconic music and being the second most used move card in the entirety of the first season, this was the fire type super move card, Volcano Burst. Now for a while, it wasn't actually clear what this move card actually did. Because the first animation for the move simply featured Terry's jaws being engulfed in flame and him doing an infinity movement with them before his opponent was engulfed in fire. But a second animation was actually used in the later episodes which actually showed what the move actually did. The move saw Terry's mouth engulfed in fire which he slammed 
slammed into the floor, sending a torrent of blazing fire into his opponent. This was shown to be one of the most powerful move cards in the entire show, and even amongst fire super move cards, which were probably some of the most powerful in the show, it was shown to be one of the best. And even against dinosaurs that had hardly taken any damage at all, this move was shown to almost always be an instant defeat for its opponents. On the other hand, the move card used by Spiny in this episode was the Water Super Move card, Shockwave. This move had Spiny shoot out a ray of water that surrounded his opponents and slowly suffocated them. You know, I've never really thought about how horrible it must actually be for the dinosaurs to experience these move cards, because some of these are pretty horrific. But as horrible as Shockwave sounds, it was actually shown to not only be reasonably weak, it was also shown to be quite easily avoidable. Moving on to episode 4, we have the first regular normal type move card used by the Alpha Gang which was Tail Smash. This move was used by Spiny against a wild Saltosaurus, and it involved giving the dinosaur enhanced strength and having them attack their opponent three times with their tail. Now, while this move was always hella fun to watch, as a normal type move, it was obviously a lot weaker than all of the elemental super move cards, and usually required a few additional hits in order to defeat an opponent. Moving on to episode 5, we had two new move cards, one of which was another normal move card, this time used by Terry, Neck Crusher. This move had Terry launch his opponent up into the air before spinning around and delivering a devastating tail smack. However, the other move card introduced in this episode was definitely the more impressive one, which was Fire Cannon. This was the first time we saw a wild dinosaur activate with a move card, and in this case, it was the fire type Carcharodontosaurus. Fire cannon itself is pretty self-explanatory. A ball of fire builds up in the dinosaur's mouth and it launches it at its opponent for devastating damage. While this was introduced in episode 5 with Carcharodontosaurus, Funnily enough, it actually reappeared in episode 39. In this episode, a second fire cannon move card was activated with a Mapusaurus. And to be honest, I find it a bit weird that they randomly decided to reuse a move card like that. Episode 39 wasn't the first time they did that, but the other time they did that, it was actually kind of cool. And if they were going to give him a move card, I feel that they could have given him something new, considering that there are a lot of fire-type move cards in the trading card game and in the arcade, that we didn't see in the anime. But then again, I guess featuring a new fire super move card with a dinosaur that was barely in his own episode wouldn't really have been the best idea, so... I don't know, maybe Fire Cannon was a good choice. But regardless, moving on to episode 6, we had the addition of a new normal type move card, Diving Press. This was used by a raging mother Myasaura against Terry. It involved the dinosaur kicking up dust into its opponent's eyes, although I'm not entirely sure as to whether or not that was actually part of the move card, diving into the air and landing on their opponent hard. Again, as a normal type move card, it wasn't that powerful, but any move will seem powerful when you have a rageful mother dinosaur use it. Moving on to episode 7, we had the introduction of two normal type move cards. The first was another very recognizable move card used by Tank, which was Dino Swing. This was another simple one, but very fun to watch, as the dinosaur would grab its opponent by its tail, swinging it round and round and round, building up momentum, before tossing it into a wall. Tank used this move to defeat the episode-exclusive dinosaur, the wind-type Utah Raptor. This allowed the Alpha Gang to temporarily take control of Utah Raptor, and its move card, which, funnily enough, it didn't actually use 
when it was getting attacked by tank. But this was the normal type move called Atomic Bomb, which involved the dinosaur leaping up into the air and then diving down like a meteor. The effectiveness of Atomic Bomb was never really explored as it never actually landed a direct hit. The only time this move was ever used, it was actually somewhat blocked by Ace's Cyclone move. So, I don't know whether this move actually would have defeated a dinosaur if it had actually landed a direct hit. But moving on to episode 8, the episode exclusive dinosaur for this episode was the lightning type Styracosaurus. Now the capsule that Styracosaurus's card was contained within actually also contained a lightning super move card called Lightning Spear. But unfortunately, when the capsule containing the two cards was dug up by a dog, Lightning Spear was actually separated from Styracosaurus's card, and when Styracosaurus was activated, the move card was not activated with it. Unfortunately, this meant that Styracosaurus was unable to defend itself from the Alpha Gang, and actually ended up getting captured by them. Luckily though, at the end of the episode, Max and the others discovered it on the beach, and Max promised to use it the next time they came up against the Alpha Gang. Now, despite saying that he'd use it the next Next time they came up against them, it took five episodes for Max to actually use the card. And when he did finally use it, we were able to see its true and incredible power. Lightning Spear involves Chomp charging into his opponent and knocking them up into the air with him below them before literally spearing them with lightning. This was one hell of a powerful move card and basically almost always guaranteed a defeat for the opponent. Moving on to episode 9, the D-Team and the Alpha Gang have had to face off against an Earth-type Ankylosaurus in the subways. And this Ankylosaurus had a very fitting Earth Super Move card called Mole Attack. Again, it's a pretty self-explanatory move as the dinosaur would burrow underground before launching up out of the ground and smashing into its opponent. Although for a Super Move card, it was actually shown to not be that powerful as both times it was used, it wasn't shown to defeat the dinosaur it was facing by itself. Moving on to episode 10, we had the introduction of the card folio, which was actually quite a big deal for a few episodes. This was an entire book full of real dinosaur cards collected by a mysterious old man that the D-Team and the Alpha Gang were fighting over. While the Alpha Gang managed to initially make off with the card folio, Zoe actually managed to grab a single card from it, which was the grass type super move card, Metal Wing. After 10 episodes, Paris finally had an attack move because this move summoned three Pteranodons to attack her opponents. It was also shown to be useful for other things as well, as it was shown multiple times being used to save people. But at long last, Paris wasn't completely helpless, and had an attack move that would actually do some damage. Now I would like to briefly mention that in this episode, Terry does something a little bit weird, in that he is running towards Chomp and Paris, with his mouth on fire. He had just used Volcano Burst before, and it looks like Volcano Burst, but Volcano Burst doesn't have you running forward with your mouth on fire, so I don't really know what happened there. I'm just going to assume that was a weird oversight of the showmakers, and that that was just supposed to be some sort of weird version of Volcano Burst. I, I literally have no idea. We don't see Ursula slash any other move cards other than Volcano Burst, so I'm just going to assume that it was a weird version of Volcano Burst that was still active for some reason. After that, we finally got a bit of a break as we had to wait three more episodes to get some new move cards. But we finally saw some new ones in the second part of the two-parter where the D-Team infiltrated the Alpha Gang's headquarters. After stealing back the card folio from the Alpha Gang, the D-Team got access to a whole new roster of powerful move cards. And in an epic battle against all three 
three of the Alpha Gang's dinosaurs, as well as Stratosaurus, the D-Team made use of them. While Max took the opportunity to use Lightning Spear for the first time, Rex and Zoe used two brand new move cards. For Rex, it was a move that would quickly become both his new favourite and his most powerful move card in Season 1. Ninja Attack. This involved Ace running faster than ever before and literally cloning himself before surrounding his opponent and repeatedly attacking them. This move was definitely the upgrade that Ace needed as this was shown to almost always defeat his opponent. Paris on the other hand once again pulled the short straw as she didn't even get to use a grass super move. Instead she got the normal type move Stomping Hammer although that move by itself is nothing to joke about. The move involved Paris knocking her opponent onto the ground with a swift tail swipe before leaping up into the air and slamming down into them. Kind of similar to Diving Press, but a lot more powerful. Now the next episode, which was episode 14, was the introduction of the first Secret Dinosaur. If you've never watched the show, basically Secret Dinosaurs were a small group of very special dinosaurs that were very, very powerful. They were secret experiments by the leader of the Alpha Gang, and the basic gist of why they were so powerful is that they were regular dinosaur cards fused with move cards. The first secret dinosaur that we got introduced to in this episode was Pachycephalosaurus, and the one and only move that this dinosaur was shown to use in the anime was Laser Ray. Now obviously because the move card is fused into the DNA of the dinosaur itself, there is actually no move card to show and the actual card doesn't exist but it's still a move, so, you know, I am including it. Given that the whole deal of secret dinosaurs is that they are dinosaurs fused with move cards, I don't know what element Laser Ray would be if it was separate from Pachycephalosaurus, because it can't be a secret move card, because the element of secret is what happens when you fuse a move card with a dinosaur. Some people have said that the secret type move cards were just normal type move cards before they were fused with the dinosaurs, and honestly, I would buy that because it doesn't seem like the secret type move cards fit in with any of the elements, so... Yeah, uh, moving on. Now, while obviously the centerpiece of episode 14 was the introduction of the first secret dinosaur, we did actually get a brand new lightning super move card from Chomp, which was Lightning Strike. Now, at least for the D team, usually when it comes to move cards, it's actually shown where they get each move card. But Max seems to randomly pull out a bunch of lightning move cards out of nowhere in the later episodes, and I think we're just sort of meant to assume that those were move cards that were within the card folio that they stole from the Alpha Gang. But in the later episodes, Lightning Strike became one of Max's most used move cards, and definitely not without reason. This move involved Chomp generating a ball of electricity between his horns before shooting a ginormous bolt of lightning at his opponents. This move probably became Max's most commonly used move going forwards, as unlike literally every other move in his arsenal, this didn't require Chomp to get close to his opponent, and it was quite easy to land a hit whilst Chomp remained at a safe distance. Now, while Lightning Strike was introduced in episode 14 and was pretty much constantly used by Chomp going forward, it actually appeared again used by a different dinosaur in episode 29. In this episode, the gang ran into another Lightning type which was Taurosaurus, and this Taurosaurus also happened to have activated with Lightning Strike. And in the final battle against Terry and the Alpha Gang, Chomp and the Taurosaurus combined their Lightning Strikes for another fusion move, creating a gigantic ball of lightning that sent Terry to the other side of Africa. And I would like to point out a nice little detail in that the showmakers actually even differentiated the two different Lightning Strikes. Chomp 
Stompsha's always been a very bright golden electricity colour, whereas Taurosaurus's was a much paler orange colour. They didn't need to do that, but they did, and I appreciate that. After that, we had to wait four more episodes, and eventually, we got episode 18, the first episode to feature three brand new move cards in one episode. The episode exclusive dinosaur for this episode was the fire type Dusplitosaurus, which was activated with a powerful fire super move card. At first, it seemed as though this was another volcano burst, as the initial movement that Displetosaurus did when activating the move was its jaws filling with fire and doing an infinity motion. But this actually turned out to be the brand new fire super move card, Firebomb. This had Dasplitosaurus's mouth fill with fire, then had him launch into the air before diving down to burn his opponent. However, funnily enough, we never actually saw this move hit due to another move card that was introduced in the same episode. And this was the first Earth Super Move card used by Tank which was Earth Barrier. This move caused Tank to slam into the ground and launch up a series of stones and boulders, which hardened together into a sort of shield, which was able to deflect Firebomb entirely. And it's actually pretty strange, because this seems like a really powerful move card for the Alpha Gang to have at their disposal, Yet I'm pretty sure this is the only episode it's used. Later on, Ursula then had Tank use another new move card, Earthquake. Once again, this is a pretty self-explanatory move card, but this caused Tank to slam into the ground and create a giant crack in the earth that Despletosaurus unfortunately fell into and was defeated by. Once again, two very powerful move cards that I'm pretty sure were, like, never used again. Moving on to episode 19, we got a new move card that was actually used by Paris. Whilst in New York, the D-Team stumbled upon a grass super move move card which had actually been embedded in the skeleton of a Seismosaurus, Bigfoot Assault. This was one of Zoe's strongest move cards as it allowed her to summon an enormous Seismosaurus to help her fight the Alpha Gang. And this one move card was shown to Solo all three of the Alpha Gang's dinosaurs. It's kind of funny how Zoe started off having no attack move cards whatsoever, and by the end of the first season, she basically had some of the strongest. But moving on to episode 20, we had the introduction of another grass-type super move card, but this one wasn't used by Paris. A few episodes ago, the Alpha Gang managed to steal a Grass-type Ultirhinus, and when they found out someone was selling a powerful Grass Super Move card, they headed straight on over to steal it. This was Super Impact, and was probably one of the most powerful Grass Super Move cards ever shown. Similar to Bigfoot Assault, this move card also summoned a giant sauropod, in that instead of a Seismosaurus, it was a Supersaurus. However, instead of just summoning the dinosaur to help you fight, this move card actually had Supersaurus pick up the grass dinosaur on its neck and launch it at its opponent. And despite the fact that at the end of the episode they get both the Ultirhinus card and the Super Impact card, Zoe never makes use of it. I have a video planned talking about why the D-Team don't summon other dinosaurs to help them, but there is no excuse to not use really, really powerful Super Move cards that are your dinosaur's elements that you've stolen back from the Alpha Gang. That Move card was just sitting in her dino holder the entirety of the rest of the season, and she never used it. Moving on to episode 21, the gang encounters an Earth-type Euplocephalus within a cave, and this dinosaur is shown to be well-armed with a very powerful Earth Super Move card, 
Quake Saber. This move has the dinosaur's tail form into a blade of pink energy, which it uses to slash at its opponent. While it definitely appeared powerful, it wasn't a guaranteed one hit, and was only shown to weaken Spiny when it was used in its one direct hit. Three episodes later, we were introduced to Ankyceratops, a lightning type dinosaur that had been activated in France. It had also been activated with a regular normal type move card, which was Death Grind. Now, if I'm not mistaken, Death Grind is actually the only normal type move card never to be named within the anime, and I literally had to look this up to figure out what it was called. But this move involved Ankyceratops whacking Spiny around the face with its tail before grinding it along the ground. Again, not a very powerful one because it's just a normal type move card, but... It's there, I guess. Moving on to episode 25, whilst digging for Alpha Metal, the Alpha Gang discovered a very powerful water super move card, Futaba Super Cannon. This move card summoned a Futabasaurus, which blasted a jet of pressurized water at its opponents. And almost every single time this move was used, it was shown to be a one-hit kill, which was unfortunate for the Alpha Gang when the move card turned against them. Yeah, I'll talk about that in another video. Three episodes later, in episode 28, we had the introduction of the second secret dinosaur, which was Therizinosaurus. And just like Pachycephalosaurus, this dinosaur also had some pretty powerful super moves, and this one actually had more than one. The first of these was Gyro Claw, in which the Therizino would spin around with its claws out and slash at its opponents in a powerful tornado attack. And the second was Claw blade in which the Therizino's claws, which by themselves are already very long, would grow to about triple the length and it would slash at its opponents. Three episodes later, in episode 31, the Alpha Gang stumbled upon another move card whilst exploring an ancient temple. Now, while this was actually a regular normal type move card, this one was actually nothing to laugh about. This move was called Tag Team and was definitely one of the most powerful and useful normal type move move cards of the entire show. This move summoned a seemingly invincible Porpoisaurus, which absorbed all of your enemy's attacks, and the Alpha Gang used it to keep Terry safe while they were exploring the ancient temple. Although after all of that, they left the poor creature behind when the temple was collapsing. Poor thing. Three episodes after that, we got the introduction of another secret dinosaur, the trio of Deinonychus. And with three dinosaurs comes three different move cards. The first of these was Whip Attack, where one Deinonychus would literally swing the other two by their tails into the opponent. The second was Spinning Attack, where the three of them launched up into the air and began spinning like saw blades and collided with their opponent. And the third was Crossing Attack, where two of the three Deinonychus would dash forward, engulfed in light and energy, and literally dash through their opponent. Yet despite having all of these super moves, they were actually one of the only secret dinosaurs that the D team actually managed to defeat themselves. Moving on to episode 35, we had the introduction of Chomp's final and probably most powerful lightning super move card. Thunder Bazooka. And this move card really is as crazy as it sounds. It involved Chomp leaping into the air and rapidly spinning whilst engulfed in lightning, flying through the air and colliding with his opponent. This was definitely Max's most powerful move card and it's very rarely seen not decimating whoever or whatever he's going up against. Now in episode 36, we we're introduced to a move card that is probably the strangest move card in the entirety of the show. And this one's going to need a little bit of background information. In the previous episode, episode 35, whilst on a mission to Australia, Seth, a member of the Alpha Gang, discovered a dinosaur card hidden in a boulder. The card in question was actually a Velociraptor card. Now, you may be wondering what's so special about that. Well, what's so special about it is that for some reason, 
It is the only dinosaur card in the entirety of the show that has no element at all. It is a normal type dinosaur card, which up until this episode, none of us even knew was possible. Because every dinosaur ever shown on the show as a dinosaur card has fitted into a group. Even the secret ones have something in common, in that they're unique. But this Velociraptor card literally is a normal type dinosaur with no element, at all. And the funny thing is, we don't even see it summoned in that state. In episode 36, Seth does some pretty weird experiments and turns it into the one and only triangular card. Now, the element of this version of the card is a little bit more difficult to figure out, but given that it still has the white edges, I'd say that it's probably still a normal card. But what makes this triangular card so special, you may ask? Well, Seth's experiment actually converted this dinosaur card into a move card that actually has multiple moves within it. We only ever see two move cards used from the card, but considering it's a triangle card, and that it has the symbols for rock, paper, and scissors on the back, which are used in the arcade game, I wouldn't put it past it to have a third that we just never saw. But in both episode 36 and 37, we saw it utilized, and the two move cards are both normal type move cards, but are actually very useful. The first of these move cards is Critical Block, which in every other area of Dinosaur King, the arcade game, the DS game, and the trading card game, block an opponent's critical attack. But in the anime, critical block is used to actually block an opponent's move card before they've used it. And the way this works in the anime is that the three velociraptors are actually summoned to basically beat the shit out of the dinosaur before it has a chance to use its move card. The other move card used by this card is Final Fury, which is used when a dinosaur is about to run out of energy. The way this works in the anime is that the Velociraptors are summoned once again and transform into three colourful beams of light, grabbing their opponent and smashing them up and down against the walls. While these may have been normal type move cards, they were definitely nothing to ignore as the D-team found out when they faced off against it multiple times. Moving on to episode 7, we had the introduction of a very powerful fire dinosaur. Sorophagonax. And this guy was activated with a very powerful fire super move card, Magma Blaster. This move had Sorophagonax launch a gigantic jet of flame and magma into its opponent, and it was shown to be a very powerful move. Next episode, in episode 38, the D team and the Alpha Gang faced off against the famous Earth type. Stegosaurus, who had a very powerful Earth-type super move of his own, Spike Arrows. This move had Stegosaurus launch sharp projectile energy arrows from its tail, and on a direct hit, was shown to be an instant defeat. And unfortunately, even though the DT managed to defeat this dinosaur, the Alpha Gang still managed to steal it. Two episodes later, in episode 40, the team ran into an Allosaurus in Spain, and this guy also had a very powerful wind super move, which was Mayfly. Now, I don't know how I feel about this move, because it is, in every conceivable way, a knockoff of ninja attack. Because the way this move works is that Allosaurus runs so fast that it literally becomes a blur, surrounds its opponent, and then literally attacks them several times. It is literally just ninja attack, but without the cloning. And I don't know why of all the wind super moves to use, because there are quite a few that weren't shown in the first season of the anime, they went with that one. Because like I said, it is literally in every way a copy of Ninja Attack. And funnily enough, it's actually Ace with Ninja Attack that manages to defeat Allosaurus while he's using Mayfly. So, yeah, I guess Ninja Attack is better. Although, if I'm gonna be perfectly honest, if I had to choose between the two of them, 
I definitely prefer the way Mayfly looks. I definitely like the idea, especially for a wind dinosaur, that it's that the dinosaur is just going so fast that it looks like there's more than one of it, rather than there actually being more than one of it. Regardless, two episodes later, in episode 42, the D-team come up against a water-type Ampelosaurus. And this guy has a powerful water super move card, which is Aqua Vortex. This move allows Ampelosaurus to summon a vortex of water to spin its opponent round, slowly suffocate them, and then the vortex disappears, and they go slamming back down onto the floor. However, compared to other super move cards, Aqua Vortex was actually shown to be relatively weak, as dinosaurs that were hit with this move were still shown to have a decent amount of energy left afterwards. Moving on to episode 44, we have the D-team going to Kyoto to face a Fukuisaurus. And this Fukuisaurus had access to a very powerful grass super move card called Emerald Garden. Now what this move card basically is, is nature's blessing but better. The way this move works is that Fukuisaurus launches a ball of energy at its opponent. If that ball of energy hits, it immediately saps away literally all of the dinosaur's energy and then returns it back to Fukuisaurus to heal it and re-energize it. This is an incredibly powerful and useful super move card because not only is it a guaranteed defeat on a direct hit, it also heals your dinosaur as well. However, this didn't stop Terry from insta-killing it using Volcano Burst, but luckily the D-Team still managed to grab it. And funnily enough, unlike Super Impact, Zoe did actually use Emerald Garden in the future in Season 2. Moving on to Episode 46, which I can only really describe as a bonus Christmas special episode, we had the introduction of the final secret dinosaur, the first dinosaur ever discovered, and my personal favourite, the mighty Megalosaurus. However, I'm still very annoyed to this day that every other secret dinosaur got an entire episode dedicated to it, and this guy, my favourite dinosaur of all time, only got about two minutes of screen time. But that didn't stop him from being an absolute badass against Chomp and Ace using its Possibly two move cards, and I say possibly because one of the move cards it uses is not actually named as a move card, and usually the move cards that the secret dinosaurs used are carried over from the arcade game, and this one isn't an ability that it uses in the arcade game. But the move card that is confirmed and that it does use is Zero G Throw, where it literally uses telekinetic powers to lift its opponent up to an insane height and then just lets them go. It was only shown to be used once in Season 1 on Ace, but when it was used, it was an instant defeat. Now, the other move cards that it used seem to be some sort of meteor shower. Now, sometimes when multiple dinosaurs go into a fight, they go into a sort of time warp battlefield which sends them back to the time of the dinosaurs. And some people theorize that this meteor shower is some sort of random event that was triggered by Megalosaurus's rage during the battle. But at the same time, Megalosaurus does actually glow before the meteors begin raining down. And when a dinosaur glows like that, it usually suggests that it's using a move card. I don't know, I've put it down as Meteor Shower in my list, so whether you want to count that as a move or not, that's completely up to you. Personally, I count it. And it's important to note that despite being in the Alpha Gang's possession, Megalosaurus wasn't actually under their control during the battle. Because Ursula didn't actually Alpha Scan the dinosaur in, she just held it up, and the card was activated automatically by Christmas lights. So she couldn't have told it to use those moves, it literally used them of its own accord. But moving on to episode 47, 48 and 49, we have the final actual move card of season 1, 
which was the mighty Fire Super Move card, Fire Scorcher. Now, this move was actually a brand new move card engineered by Seth, and it was engineered to be a incredibly powerful move card that could not be countered. The move card had the dinosaur generate a gigantic ball of blazing fire in its mouth before launching it at its opponents. And every single time this move hit, it was shown to be an instant defeat no matter what. Whether it was one dinosaur or three, this move decimated anything and everything it came up against. Now, the problem with this move card initially was that it was actually too powerful even for the dinosaur using it. Seth first tested the move using Terry and the move ended up instantly defeating him despite him being the one to use it. This actually caused Seth to have to mutate the other two dinosaurs that he used the move with, which was Sorofagonax and the mutant Black T-Rex. The only thing that was shown to counter Fire Scorcher was the combined fusion move of 14 different move cards. And speaking of fusion moves, let's move on to the final move of season one. In part three of the four part finale of the first season, Max and Rex are facing off against Seth and his mutant Sorofagonax, and Dr. Z suggests combining Thunder Bazooka with Cyclone to make a fusion move. The result is the first, and I'm pretty sure the only, named fusion move in the entire show, Thunderstorm Bazooka. The way this move seems to work is that Ace activates Cyclone and runs forward surrounded by wind with Chomp running behind him. Chomp then jumps up into the air carrying Ace's wind with him, then activating Thunder Bazooka, leading to a spinning missile of wind and lightning. Thunderstorm Bazooka was only used once in the first season and I think a few times in the second season as well, but I'm pretty certain that every single time it was used, it was an instant defeat to their opponent. And I suppose if I am talking about every move in Season 1, I have to mention the Super Fusion move used to defeat Black T-Rex, which was a fusion of 14 different move cards, which were... Get ready. Cyclone, Nature's Blessing, Mayfly, Emerald Garden, Shockwave, Earthquake, Aqua Vortex, Laser Ray, Spike Arrows, Magma Blaster, Gyro Claw, Zero G Throw, Spinning Attack, and Volcano Burst. Huh. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. That is every single move card from Dinosaur King. Season 1. Now I said at the start of the video, if you're a Dinosaur King fan, to stick around to the end because I had some cool things to tell you about. Now as I explained, Dinosaur King holds a very special place in my heart. Honestly, it might have been one of the major catalysts that got me into dinosaurs. I've sort of always been into dinosaurs. I can't really remember that there was anything specifically that got me into dinosaurs. But given that I was really young when I watched Dinosaur King, I'd say that that must have been a major factor. And I think it's really sad that the Dinosaur King fan base is sort of splintered and no one's really talking about it nowadays. Well, this is the beginning of my journey to change that. I had a browse through the Dinosaur King subreddit and found that every single Discord link I found and clicked on was either expired or invalid. So as someone with good experience creating Discord servers for obscure fandoms, I decided to create one of my own. Introducing the unofficial Dinosaur King Discord server. I created this server for the purpose of creating a modern, non-abandoned, centralized place for Dinosaur King fans to come and chat with one another. And the server's not even been up a day and we've already got a ton of members. So go and join the Dinosaur King unofficial Discord server. The link will be down in the description down below. And the other thing I wanted to mention 
mention is that if you're a Dinosaur King fan, I'd recommend going and subscribing to my channel, because this is definitely not the last Dinosaur King video I'm going to be doing. And as well as that, very soon I'm going to be beginning a live playthrough of the Dinosaur King DS game, which I love to pieces and I've recently gotten back into. And if you want to stay up to date with everything that I'm doing, Dinosaur King and otherwise, then go past the Dinosaur King Discord link in the description and join the link of my YouTube Discord. If you join that, you'll have automatic notifications whenever I post a video, as well as live stream notifications and teasers for future videos and projects. So go and join those two Discord servers down in the description down below, and subscribe if you want to see more Dinosaur King stuff from this guy right here. I've got tons of videos planned, including more formal videos like this one, where I'm going through a list of certain aspects of the show, as well as lore and story videos talking about certain elements of the show. So make sure to subscribe with notifications on if you don't want to miss any of them. So thanks a lot for watching everyone, I really hope you did enjoy, and I will see you on another video very, very soon. Goodbye everyone.